Googly, 1812. Googly. Ah, uh, how about a Scandinavian? Play this variation with the knight. It's the way I usually play it. And then, uh, yeah, if they try to hold on to the pawn, you can play a gambit. It's kind of fun. Always nice to play a gambit when you know you have uh, good compensation. You can actually push on to e4 here. But, uh, well, his knight will come here, and I guess he will actually round up that pawn. Let's uh, just develop. So you have uh, a lot of control over the dark squares here. Mm, yeah, he never played um, d3. Let's go for e4. I can defend the pawn now with the rook, so that's pretty convenient. I mean, the other thing I was waiting for is maybe to play uh, h6 before I push that pawn. But this this should be good enough. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's going to keep keep playing. Can't play, yeah. Uh, can't play f3 because of the bishop. <laughs> Let's go ahead and kick the knight now. Mm -hmm. I can put my bishop here. He was trying to get me to drop back and he would shut the bishop out. Yep, so the knight has to retreat. What now? Uh, I could put the knight here. Go after the square. Knight two. Since he never played d3, maybe I can sink a knight on that square. If he takes it, I can have a pawn on that square defended by this bishop. Yeah, so he plays there. Let's go for this. If he moves his knight, I can take the rook, so I'm not worried about this bishop getting trapped. This bishop. Uh, this bishop is loose, so maybe there's uh, some tactic based on that I should look, which watch out for. Uh, there's also the idea of taking here to open up his king side. It might be good, I'm not sure. Oh, maybe just a uh, knight here to go after this uh, this guy. Okay, go after the pin knight. Let's see, take the knight, take the pawn, and can I attack this uh, pinned rook here? Okay, if I go here to attack the knight, he takes, I take the rook. If he defends, and take the bishop and then take the knight. Hmm. 
Hmm, doesn't actually seem to, to gain anything. Okay, I'm going to step up here. This uh, defends the bishop, and maybe threatens to win a pawn near his king. And, uh, well, the idea is that uh, with the bishop defended, I'll be able to, oops, wrong, wrong diagonal, I'll be able to push this pawn forward with a tempo. Okay, so he decided to just take there. That prevents me from doing what I was planning to do, or thinking of doing. Because now my pawn is blockaded, but he has a horrible black backwards, uh, a horrible backwards deep on. And um, his bishop, well, his bishop can come out here. Okay, let's drop back here, defend my pawn. It's, it's a key piece, and then see where this knight wants to go. Yeah, rook here, bishop here, queen here, right? Rook here, bishop here, queen here, threatening uh, queen h2 strike. And he just goes back. So I can get my pawn back and mess up his uh, pawn structure at the same time. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I'm already threatening, already threatening here. Let's see, so knight here. Okay, you just gave up. <laughs> well, that's a, a good example of why you don't uh, want to try and take that pawn and hold on to it. Here, let's uh, play another game. Maybe we can get a rapid game here. Mm, e4. Run after you. Oh, a um, Petrov, a Russian game. So I like to play with the early uh, knight out, and then I like to take with the b pawn, which is not the way they play these days. They play with the d pawn, but um, this is, I think, is an interesting position. And we'll see. And the best move for black is actually to push this pawn again and just stop me here in the center. Um, where is his knight? So the knight. You know, you got to worry about the knight coming out to here, but it's a long way away. Let's go ahead and um, unpin with the queen and take control of this diagonal. Castle. Get ready to castle. Yeah, there's the knight. So I'll push this pawn now. Don't want his knight coming here. And uh, yeah, let's slow down. We both move too fast, right? We, we start with 10 minutes and we still have 10 minutes. We're out of the opening here. We're way past any sort of uh, theory that I know. Okay, I can put my queen here to attack this pawn. can develop my bishop to the uh, f4 square. And I can put my rook on the b file. If I develop here, he'll bring his knight out. And I'll just have to go back. But his knight will be a bit out of play. 
Yeah, because knight goes to h5. I don't see it as being a big deal. I'll just move my bishop back. And then I am going to put the rook on the b file. Okay, he's defending his bishop. And setting up a battery. Oh, and also connecting his rooks. Makes sense. Okay, so he created that weakness on the light squares. Is there a way to exploit that? I would like to get a bishop on this diagonal. <laughs> How about if we uh, kick his bishop? So that if he takes, I will take back. Get my bishop where I want it. Ah, right, right. He did that. He did do that. He, uh, when he put the queen up here, it defended. It defended the uh, the bishop. And uh, and I moved my queen right where he could get another tempo with the uh, knight. Hmm. Yeah, so he's got knight here with the fork. I have queen here and then drop back when he pushes the pawn. This square, this forking square is still guarded. This pawn is loose. Ah, he pushed that pawn. Interesting. Uh, should we take? Yeah, he can take with the either pawn or the knight. So he wants to go there. So he is looking to oppose my queen here. And my queen needs to move, that's for sure. Again, I'm trying to keep an eye on this square. Yeah, actually, if I put the queen here, I will be threatening this guy. No, I'm not threatening it. It's defended. And I'm in the path of the bishop. If I put my queen here, I avoided that in the first place because I didn't really like it. Excuse me put my queen here. He'll put his rook here. There's two pieces in the way. Now the fork is not so scary because I can always trade rooks. If he trades first, that would that would reestablish the fork. But I was thinking maybe I could just play my bishop here. He goes here with the fork. Oh, well then the bishop is not in the forking square anymore too. That's another way to solve it. Didn't get my bishop on this good diagonal, but uh, I never got it there, but maybe it's okay. Excuse me. This knight, I should do something with this knight. It's got no no great prospects. Yeah, he did go there immediately with the rook. Put the rook opposite your opponent's queen. Something might happen. But it's a good good general rule.
Yep, I could trade. I was thinking, I take. He has to take back with the rook. But I didn't want to do that. Um, it would give him control of the B file. Okay. Just going to move the rook with tempo, maybe. Indeed. Okay, and then I'll lift my rook up and he will try and find a way to move his bishop with tempo. I can take the bishop first because that hits his queen. If I, if I wanted to. Let's just lift the rook and attack his knight. I don't see the knight having any great squares to go to. I don't see this uh, bishop is needing any defense. If he takes, I'll take back and um, we'll have a symmetric pawn structure. Or I could even take with my queen and see if uh, see if I can trap his knight. His knight, uh, where is knight? His knight can go here. Not there. Not there. Oh, his knight can take here. Maybe that's what he's thinking. So let's think about this. If the knight takes the pawn, I can take the bishop. Queen will come here, and then I can put my rook here. And that will be uh, attacking the knight and attacking the pawn. So I think I don't uh, lose material here. He's still looking for a good uh, good discovery with this bishop somewhere. Somewhere. Just put my queen somewhere where um, put my queen somewhere where when the knight takes here it doesn't hit my queen because I don't want that move to be with tempo so maybe maybe a square like that for my queen okay well we did slow down move 22 and we're both thinking ah he did decide to go that way so what, take with the queen? Oh, I see, he's doing that because now uh, he can take this pawn. Okay, let's take his knight then. Yeah, the, the tactic I was counting on was involving my bishop taking his bishop and dragging the queen away from defense of that pawn. And without that tactic, after the trade, then he would just win a pawn there, and I didn't think that was good for me. Although, let's see, rook here, the knight is here, my rook is here, the knight can go here, here, he can go here. Okay, it did have a good, good retreating square. So he just goes back. So what to do? Should I uh, attack that pawn? Should I attack that bishop? Okay, we're going back to putting pressure on this pawn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was thinking um, knight here to here. There's a way to activate my knight. But I'm kind of curious, what is his plan? What is his plan for that bishop? And maybe he's just putting the bishop there to support a pawn coming forward. OK, 
Okay, how would I... Can I use the knight to get a third piece here? I would have to go to a square like that. Would take some doing. <laughs> it needs to go where my queen is, I guess. Let's see. Ah, here's a route. So I'd start by pushing this pawn, I guess. Oh, interesting. Okay. If I just um, line up here against his bishop, isn't that uh, an issue? No. It is not, he says. Okay, I can go here at least to uh, <clears throat> get rid of this uh, pin. Well, it's, it's an attack there. It's just a pawn, I guess. It's not a mate threat. It's a bit annoying, but I can push this pawn. Aha. I can still push this pawn. Oh, no, I can't. His bishop comes here. Uh, that's it. That's nice. I push this pawn to attack his bishop. His bishop comes here to attack my rook and pin it. I take the bishop. He can take back with the rook. So I need to unpin here. How do I do this? If I want to push that. Maybe I can't ever get that in. I should just give up the idea. So I could um, put my queen here. So that when he goes here, well, when he goes, yeah, I just want to get my queen. get my queen off of um, this row so that when he goes here to attack my uh, rook and I have to move it um, then uh, then he's not hitting my queen this would have been dangerous with my queen still here okay so now I'm thinking of pushing this pawn again Go for it. Aha, so he challenges my bishop. End up with a bishop versus knight, but my rook will be safe. He'll have pawns here. I don't know if that's so good for me. I don't have to take. I can wait for him to take. <clears throat> Put more pressure on the bishop. Ah, so I decided to trade. I don't know, maybe he's going for some end game where he's a little bit better because of the better pawn structure. Could be, could be a valid thing to do. I have queen here. 
he has pawn here. Yeah, I just realized if I take and he takes back with the pawn, I can play rook takes here. So he brings a queen in to defend. Okay, so I'm going to take. He wants to take with the pawn. And I can put my rook here on the queen. I move the rook here first, he takes the bishop. <laughs> and then when I take the queen, he takes my queen. So that doesn't work. Can't move the rook first. I have to trade before moving the rook if that's what I want to do. Yeah, it's hard to judge this endgame, but I think it's probably a little better for black. I don't actually see a better option right now. This diagonal was getting dangerous. Hmm. Yeah, I put the queen here, trying to defend this pawn. And uh, and then he goes here with check and then pushes this pawn, forking my two pieces. So where I have to go here. Threatening uh, this pawn. He can check and take this pawn. He can check here, but this pawn is defended. Oh, he can check here and take this pawn. When the queen leaves, I'm looking at this pawn, and he also has the idea maybe of pushing forward in the center. Ah, he just goes for the end game. Okay. Rooks and pawns. Should be a draw, but uh, you never know. Yeah, let's um, secure my passed pawn. And um, go after this guy. Maybe here, push these pawns. He has advanced pawns in the center, but actually the pawns in the flank are more important in the, in the end game, and also past pawns are more important. So maybe, maybe I'm okay after all. Tough game. Yeah, so he's going for his counterplay. Push the pawn once. Now I come over here first. It'll be easier to push these pawns forward if I have a duo like that. If I push this pawn ahead and he put his rook in front and I could come over maybe and take this pawn but I can't um, Okay, so my plan is to, uh, when he takes back, to walk my king over and get in front of the pawn. That is the plan. But as I was saying up here, if I had pushed, he put his rook here, and I brought my rook over to round this guy up. Whenever I take this pawn, he takes this pawn. So that's actually not, not helping me, I don't think. But if I take this pawn first, then I can put my rook back and I can inch these forward, you know. This goes here, this goes here, then the rook goes one step forward, and then repeat, push. Push, push. Ah. 
Oh, he decided to take with the rook. Okay. Let's take here. I mean, his other idea maybe is to go after my king. But uh, this looks like a winning king and pawn endgame to me at this point. And not too hard to play. You have that standard plan of using these pawns to help each other. Yeah, I'm just going to give up that pawn. At check. That's why I was able to push this pawn first. And I can push here. And I can push here. Okay, so now is a crunch time. I go here. He can take this pawn. No, I can't. It's still protected. If I go here, he can take this pawn. And then this one. He can only take this one with the, with the rook and I can trade. Now I wonder if just having two pass pawns. I take this pawn. He takes this pawn and then I just start pushing this guy. If he ever takes this pawn, I win because I've got the outside pass pawn because I'll trade rooks. Okay, so that's one theory. The other theory is I put my rook here. But I can never um, push. Well, can I push? Let's put my rook here and then improve my king position. Yeah. That didn't work. <laughs> He's able to stop me here. Okay. So I have the check here. Maybe this is the idea. I knew there, there should be a way to win this. I was just not finding the idea right away, but this looks good. King has to step back here or here. Then I can just queen because the queen will defend the rook. So the fact that his king is attacking the rook is not important. <laughs> that was a nice uh, little intermediate move, but it didn't work. Okay, well, that was cool. Here, let's, uh, let's take a look at that on the analysis board. I'm kind of curious to see if I was doing well the whole game or if I had some blunders. Because it did seem like a tough game, so I wouldn't be surprised if there were some, some uh, mishaps. Let's see, I started with E4. We went for a Russian game. This, I think the computer doesn't particularly care for this. Uh, line as much as uh, the main line but it's a way to get out of the main line and it should still be okay for me so let's let's look at the graph here yeah so you see it's about even around here actually thinks white is good if I played oh it thinks because of his mistake it thinks the uh, thinks this move is a mistake and then it thinks what I should do, rook b1 immediately. Okay, I'll, I'll buy that. And so it thinks I'm a little better here, but I didn't play the most accurate moves and now it's about even again, which is what my experience is with this line. And then did not like this rook move here so much, did give a big alternative, so small mistakes. Yeah, he was getting some pressure here and uh, I was starting to feel uncomfortable. So where did I, where was my mistake, say, here? Okay, the queen maneuvers were not the best, huh? Move the queen here. I 
Because, yeah, because he immediately hits me again with the knight. Gave him a tempo there. And then uh, the queen should go here. So what does he have here? What is his good move at this point? Instead of rook a to b1, he should play bishop f6. Ah, put the bishop on, excuse me, put the bishop on this really good diagonal here. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so anyway, we're kind of uh, going back and forth here, as you see, up and down. <laughs> Graph goes up and down. It's not, but it's never a huge advantage to one side or the other. Rook takes c3. So it did like rook takes. It wanted me to take the bishop with the queen. And after knight takes pawn... And just uh, bishop d2. Oh, I see. So the uh, the knight is kind of trapped here. So it, it only, could only get out via this square, and then I get the pawn back. Okay, and that keeps it about even. Uh, I see. So so he was a little better here. Then I went there. He went back. What is his mo best move here? His best move is bishop f8. Okay. <laughs> bishop f8. Well, okay. I get the point of bishop f8. It's opening up this uh, line for his uh, rook. And uh, then here, the queen move it didn't like. Bishop f5 was best. Just wanted to retreat the bishop back to f5. Oh, pawn to f5. Yeah, he played that later, but pawn there is good in here. So I'm okay here. And then after he plays pawn f5, I should not move my knight. I should play knight to d2. Well, knight d2 gives up a pawn. Ah, it doesn't. It doesn't give up a pawn. Excuse me. Come on, scroll. Sorry. Uh, it doesn't give a pawn because uh, I have this battery here. So I could play knight d2 right away. So that would have been better for me. Anyway, oh, okay. I didn't play that. I played knight e1. And then here's his best point in the game. And he could have played, instead of the bishop move, which he'd been thinking about and I'd been thinking about too, he could have played queen. Uh... Okay, I could have played queen h5. He could have played g5, kicking my... Yeah, I was afraid of this also during the game. g5, kicking my bishop. It weakens his king side, but this, this bishop might get turned into a piece that has no, no moves, right? He could push here, and then when my bishop retreats, he could push here. That would be very uncomfortable. Yeah, and I've let this this bishop is well defended by rook and queen, so there's no counter pressure from my rook doesn't amount to anything. Okay, so I survived this pass, and um, oh, it didn't like that pawn push. That was when I thought I was starting to get back in the game. What does it want instead of the pawn push? Queen d1. Okay, so after c3, what's his good move? His good move would have been to go back to uh, f6. Okay. Well, the bishop on f6 can come around here and harass my rook. Might get a little bit uncomfortable for it. But um, he is letting go of this pawn when he plays that way. So you'd have to have to calculate the compensation there. Okay, so I went back here with the knight. My last mistake. H4 was best, okay. And then, but he took. Yeah, so taking the knight, then I was feeling okay here. Didn't, well, it gives that a question mark, but if you look at the evaluation, it's all about even here. And then this is okay for me. And uh, at what point did it start getting good? It's right here when he played that move. 
when he played the pawn up. So instead of pawn up, he should play king g6, bring the king on. Okay, he needs to get the king closer to where I have uh, the passed pawn. If he can blockade with the king, maybe he can hold a draw. But when I have this uh, good passed pawn here, and then at this point it's winning. Yeah, so this was his last mistake. And then after this, it's pretty much game over. No way to win this against uh, good play anyway. And, uh, and I kept the advantage the rest of the way, so this was okay. I could have um, back up. Yeah, at this point, I could have already done the maneuver I did in the game. I just uh, was forgetting. But that's the way you push this home, chase the king away, and then promote a pawn. Okay, uh, good game. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I uh, will see you next time. Bye now.